what's up you bunch of lettuce farmers galactic criminal here with another reaction video and man it is hot as fuck today so this time we got a video called seven times video game violence went too far now i don't really know what, exactly what that means uh i do have like a, a pretty serious backlog of gaming that i've done and I, you know most of them pretty violent i could say probably only a couple of times uh there were like you know certain moments in games that uh you know, gave me the, that cringe factor, you know, or like, you know, morally I felt, you know, pretty bad doing what I had to do. But yeah, I don't I don't really know if they ever went too far. Now, there were like maybe a couple instances that I can remember. Uh, maybe they'll be in this video. Let's check it out. Press play with a one, a two, a three. The whole point of a video game is to have fun. Fun is the objective, and fun is often doing things we can't do in our regular lives. Like yeah. fun, then the smackdown on Mr. Smith for calling mom and talking Bully, I never played that. Parents evening, or just dishing out punishment on a legitimately bad guy. But sometimes developers cross the line with the tone or meaning of the violence they create, giving the anti-game violence <laughs> crowd all the ammunition they need, leaving the player feeling rather uncomfortable with what they just did. I'm Seb from WhatCulture.com, and this is seven times video game violence went too far. Number seven, GTA 5's torture scene. Okay, GTA yeah, this is the one that I was thinking about. Protesters of game violence as it's focused on semi-realism and freedom to commit various forms. The torture of scene, I was just like, really, you're gonna make, video games you're gonna make me do that? Addictive. They promote hatred, racism, sexism, and they reward violence. But the game is so yeah, they do. The Holy fuck, is that Jesus? Violence is rarely ever hard hitting. There are exceptions where it does get oh, yeah, it was GTA. the biggest one being the mission where Trevor graphically tortures someone for information. Teeth pulling, kneecap snapping, waterboarding, and electrocutions were made even more gruesome by the fact you weren't just watching, but were given full control over this dark scene. Somehow just battering random. Yeah, you had to do a lot of stuff in that torture scene. To it was pretty fucked up. This shop is popular with cops. You must leave now. Number six, Modern Warfare Freeze Chemical Attack. It's all people's choices, though. Those are choices that you make. You don't have to play the game that way. Obviously, there's like violence you have to do, but one bigger and one better in the sequel. And as the industry continues to march towards futuristic everything, Link, we're looking at you. These moments end up becoming more and more shocking. And this culminated in Modern Warfare 3, where in an attempt to duplicate the shock. Oh yeah, Russian that was kind of fucked up. I forgot about that. They unleashed a chemical attack right on top of an unwitting child, completely obliterating everyone nearby and plunging the city into chaos. Shocking as it was, it didn't hold the same gravitas as their first attempt and came across as being emotionally manipulative for the sake of it. Number five, Jupiter yeah. Forever's Wholesome Twins. In between wiping out aliens... Fuck, stuff, I'm so glad I never got, got that game. ...several pleasures throughout his existence on PC and beyond, including the company of the aptly named Wholesome Twins, who have a habit of living up to their names. <laughs> All right, time for my reward. Throughout their time in the game, they're portrayed as ditzy, airheaded sex objects who are just filled to the brim with suggestive puns. Well, I need some mouthwash. Duke comes across a fucking the game. game. Worse for wear during Get a over it. Alien ship, and they confess they were forced to have sex for the first time with their alien captors, and just seconds later, they are ripped apart from the inside out. But <laughs> not before Duke cracks a hilarious one-liner. Looks like you're f***ed. The pinnacle of comedy. Most <laughs> players may have enjoyed the classic Duke. That was kind of tasteless, I can agree. The previous titles were sorely missing here, and it's no wonder the game performed so well. Number four, oh, fuck. Hatred. Yeah. Hatred is a game that... Hatred, yeah, I never played that. I heard that it got a lot of uh, negative response, though. ...brutal murders with no real rhyme or reason behind them. The game has you play as a rampaging serial killer on a suicide mission, compelled to kill as many living things as possible before you meet your own grisly end. Whilst the flimsy narrative only barely serves to give some context to this kill fest, it has been argued that the level of violence is similar in other games, but the lack of any offsetting features like humour or a serviceable story combined with the consistently dark tone make this four hour slog a real pain in the uh... the uh... the neck. Number three, Hotline Miami 2's attempted rape. 
You don't like it? Don't fucking play it. Of your character pulling on a mask and then storming a building. As you finish bludgeoning and blasting your way for the building's inhabitants, in order to progress, you're forced to fatally wound the half naked girl that's left over. And if that's not uncomfortable enough, as a dying woman squirms on the floor, the only way you can finish the scene is by approaching her and pressing the action button, which results in the killer attempting to rape her. A film director suddenly calls <laughs> out before you see the woman actually be assaulted, but you don't know this whilst you're playing it. So those few seconds where your character gets on top and appears to arch his back up left most players questioning what they had just done. Number two, the entirety of Manhunt 1 and 2. If you're talking about video game violence, then you're talking about... Never played those either. It still is to this day one of the most well-known cases of a game being banned in multiple countries, and with good reason. Back in the mid-2000s when this was the pinnacle of graphics, these gratuitous murders had scarcely been seen in this detail and this raw. Throughout the first game, you play as a death row prisoner, making snuff films for a psycho film director, and in the second, you play a mental patient suffering from amnesia. Very convenient wow. framework that allows for a wide, wide range of stealth executions of various people, which would put even modern day directors to shame. <laughs> Number one, Postal. So like Hatred, Postal has you going postal on a small population of people with the ultimate goal being to kill a percentage of the NPCs on the map. With no background music or context to your killings to speak of, the violence becomes old and uncomfortable very quickly when you realise there's no point or reward whatsoever to the gruesome slaughter. The rinse and repeat of mindless civilian murdering makes you question what type of person you really are. When it dawns on you, you could be doing literally anything else right now with your time. Yeah. Like, socialising outside. <laughs> or playing Overwatch. Games like Postal and Hatred are meant to be as one-dimensional and controversial as possible, so it's no surprise they're on this list. But did we miss any? Do you agree with the list? Let me know in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter here. This has been Seth from WhatCulture.com. Thanks for watching. Huh. So yeah, like I said before, uh, that GTA scene where you had to torture that guy was a little bit cringy. Um, where they like basically forced you, there was no option to skip it, which I think was kind of a mistake. I think the, a game that's you know, a game like GTA that there are so many choices, it uh, it didn't make sense that there wasn't the you know, the ability to just leave you know leave that to that character and then go on with the next scene. So yeah, I understand like you know if it's just violence for absolutely no reason, it, you know it doesn't really make any sense. You know if the violence kind of you know pushes the story along or you know like. Or, you know, like, helps with, like, character progression. Then, you know, it obviously, it makes sense. But then there's other games, you know, like, obviously, like, Mortal Kombat X got a huge, uh, got a huge negative response because of, like, the, the, you know, the graphic violence that's in that game. So there's always, like, the argument, like, uh, you know, should we let this stuff, you know, keep being made? Or, hey, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch. You know, for the longest time, movies have done far, far worse things than this. And it's just because games are technically related to to the youth to younger people or at least that's what you know our elders would think uh people like me who have grown up with games uh our generation can handle that kind of stuff it's you know it's always been like a you know like a double-edged knife you know i think the main problem is that the esrb rating really needs to be enforced you know it's not like a, it's not a government uh rating system so people you know if some store clerk just feels like, oh, whatever, you know, kid, buy this game, fine, I don't care. Or they just, you know, they don't tell a parent that they're buying a violent game for their kid. I think that's a big problem. So at least until the ESRB really uh, starts to be more enforced, I think parents, the people who complain the most about this type of stuff, they need to monitor their children, especially nowadays, because kids can get stuff, you know, just downloading online so then their parents wouldn't even know. Yeah, the responsibility lies in the people, you know, consumers buying these games, not really in the developers. You know, there's like sick content out there, disgusting stuff that I just don't purchase or watch because I just don't want to see it. You know, so if you don't want to see it, don't fucking watch it. It's that whole culture of, you know, like, oh, well, I'm going to be offended for these people just so I can like hop on the fucking bandwagon of hate. So yeah, to a degree, I can understand sometimes, you know, th things can go too far, but it can happen, like I said, the same thing for movies and stuff like that, and TV shows. Like, how many of the TV shows now are showing fucking people's heads get cut off, and boobs, and blood, and everything? You know, if you don't want someone to see it, you don't want your kids to see it, then don't let them see it.
Simple as that. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description for this video so you can watch it for yourself, full screen, full audio, and hit a like and subscribe to those guys. And as always, have yourself a fantastic evening.